Coming in just high or just shy of 7,000 pounds, this is the Passport 3350 Bunkhouse here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This was the first of its kind. Uh, this is a bath and a half bunkhouse outside kitchen with two slides. This model has actually been um, kind of R&D by other brands, and R&D meaning rip off and duplicate, because it is awesome. It does things that other similar floor plans just can't, and I think one of the coolest parts about it is that it gives a, uh, a bathroom right next to both sides of the camper, so you have a bathroom right next to both sets of sleeping areas. In terms of travel friendliness, this isn't the most functional trailer. The layout just doesn't really allow for that. You'll notice that you do lose access to the master bedroom up front. Um, when the slide out does come in, you are pretty limited up here. However, you notice uh, if you can get uh, with that second bathroom door, basically what it does allow you to do is if you are just trying to like pack up the fridge or something like that to get going, you can actually sneak here through the direct access half bathroom. You can open this door like I've done, and you can access the fridge and uh, a portion of the kitchen cabinetry. So. Like I said, not the most travel friendly thing out there, and that is one area the 3220 is going to do a little bit better, but it certainly could be worse. Now, Passport is a brand for which I have extremely high personal respect. Um, they are some, well, they're the lightest of the lightweights that we have here at Halid RV, and that is really saying something given all the brands that we have. They also have service records that are basically second to none. Um, they are so smart in their uh, their execution that this laminated ultralight product actually has a lower price point than some equivalent um, wood skeleton stick built products. Like, uh, you know, the, the Jayco J-Flight is an amazing product and it's the single most successful um, RV on the planet. But if you uh, compare comparable floor plans, like if you look at something like this, versus a J-Flight 32 BHDS, what you're going to find is that the Passport version is probably up to like 2,000 pounds less weight, and it also comes in a little bit less money. But that's the cool thing with the Passport. They do everything that matters and nothing that doesn't, so they, they never get like out of control from a feature or cost or weight standpoint. Um, case in point, all LED lighting. We do have central air. We do have central heating with an enclosed heated underbelly. We've got great prep space. They've even recently added, uh, very recently at the time of this filming actually, all sorts of little LED night lighting through the coach and they really didn't skimp on that. But that's the thing. Again, they do everything that matters exactly where it matters. They do it in the right quantities. But their consistency and their construction and their equipment packages through their family allow them to build the same thing the same way every single time in a very cookie cutter fashion which uh, corresponds into something that is just very effective at what they do. And again, everything that matters is here. We've got these big breeze windows. That was a big trifold high to bed sleeper sofa. We'll talk about more in a little bit here. Uh, you've got the full size U dinette and that's actually like a, a deeper 42 inch dinette. Uh, and you can tell because how much of that dinette sticks out of the slide out. Now that does mean maybe it juts into your living space a little more, but it also means you can easily comfortably sit four people here instead of only two or three people at a pretend U dinette. Plus it'll fold down into like a adult size, basically seven foot bed. And all the things that matter are done. We've got the uh, doors for easy access to our bench storage there. You can see that normally where you'd expect to see a pantry would be right next to the microwave. Now we're able to see one over here uh, next to the, uh, the bathroom, sort of that little partition wall between the bunks and the living area. But this is kind of nice. This could be a pantry. This could be uh, a linen cabinet. It could be some overflow clothing storage for the kids. It could be a little bit of anything or everything. And I just lost power, so I'm going to have to go investigate that. Sorry about the little hot swap there. Um, I have a, a battery box hooked up to the tongue of this, and somebody walking by thought, oh, Josh must have left his box out and, uh, you know, out here in the weather, and I don't want him to forget it and lose it. So they actually unhooked the power from us with the best intentions possible, if they just didn't realize we were in here working at the time. So anyway, back to the task at hand. This little half bath right here. What is so key and clutch about this is that we have access at night to hit the bathroom from both sleeping zones because you have a front master bathroom then back here we have this rear uh, half bath right there so that means that at night nobody has to walk past one another to get to the bathroom also means that if you have somebody sleeping on any of your fold down sleeper seating right here uh, which you could have up to four people sleeping here in the living room 
They also have quick, easy access to the bathroom. It's going to be better rest, better sleep for everybody because it's more easily accessed. And notice, too, again, these LED nightlights so that kids, people, whatever, can navigate through this thing at night. It's also really handy if you're just watching a movie at night and you don't want to have to flip on all the lights and blind everybody. Um, now, what's also neat about this half bath is if you do have guests at your campsite, people who aren't necessarily staying with you, this sort of doubles as a guest bathroom. So... The, uh, the the friends, the neighbors, the unwashed masses, here they have access to this nice little bathroom space. But mom and dad, you still maintain your own private bathroom up front. And that's what's great about this. This isn't just a private bedroom camper. This is a private bed and bath camper, which is so cool. Now, we've got a 300-pound rated upper bunk here, which is the most I've ever seen out of any manufacturer. You see that it can fold up or down, so you do have sort of a day-night function out of this. And it's kind of funny how trends come and go. I, I don't think people realize how awesome these little Converticube things are. They don't look fancy. They don't look flashy. But guys, they're the most flexible, useful thing. And the kids can jump up and down and beat on them. And guess what? Unlike a sofa that can break, these things just ain't going to break. I mean, you really, really have to basically just take a razor to it and cut it open to screw it up. So... It can be just kind of like an open lounge like you see here right now. Each section can fold open to its own individual bed, so it does give you more sort of individualized sleeping areas. And it can obviously double as a daytime sofa to face over here towards uh, what could be storage. Oh, I mean, it's ridiculous storage. You can have entertainment hooked up over the wall over here. Before we get to all that, though, I do want to point out what I call the big kid upper bunk. This upper bunk right here is about 50% wider, and what that allows for is a taller, longer, bigger kid. They can sort of sleep crosswise on this and be more comfortable because these are usually, almost every bunk mattress is about 74 inches, the length of a short camp queen. And that is, coincidentally, usually the, the length of a standard sleeping bag, which is another easy way because people say, how do I get sheets for these? Well, here's a tip from your Uncle Josh, get sleeping bags. They're easier to maneuver around and clean. Now... Here's one major difference between the 3350 Passport we are in and its sister, the 3220. The 3220 has an extra bunk over here, whereas this one has this big, massive storage area. So you can still sleep four in this bunkhouse, one up here, one up there, two down there. The 3220 will let you sleep an additional fifth person, but look at this. I mean, everything above the outside kitchen is nothing but ridiculous storage. The only problem with this cavity being that large is you'll have to keep the kids from trying to shove each other in there and shut the door. That's the only problem with this. Now, you may notice if you look really close, you'll see that these sort of what look like shelf beams right here, they're extra thick and heavily reinforced. That's because this is the ladder to the upper bunk. So that, again, this is the one of the most textbook examples of who and what passport is. Rather than um, separating this out and losing storage space by blocking it off and putting a ladder in front of it, because the ladder would make it so you couldn't get to that deep storage, they've kind of made the wall itself a ladder. And it serves two purposes, but they've given you equal function for less money. And that's something passport does all the time. Like, uh, it, it, But they don't skimp on the important details. Again, everything that matters is done. The bedroom windows here, all well, the bunkhouse and bedroom windows, all the windows in this will open for ventilation. You've got an extra heat exhaust vent above. Now, here in the kitchen, you actually see that done uh, another way. Um, so it throws a lot of people off. They might look at a passport and see that the stovetop vent does not actually um, have a fan that vents outside. This is a charcoal filter, basically, to help with um, odors. So how do you get the heat out of the camper if you're cooking? They, they didn't forget, guys. They did it a different way. They gave you two things in one, so they found a way to give you more features for less weight and less money. And that's who Passport is. It is the smart money product. They include, it's not just a skylight, it is also a vent up here. So if you are going to cook up a storm, or you just want airflow from windows or anything like that, you don't have to turn on a fan to exhaust heat from the camper. You open that up, and because heat rises, it will organically funnel itself out of the camper, and then... Air from the side windows, if you open one of those, will naturally pull in a cooler air to recycle and exhaust the hotter air. It just, it's a natural thermodynamic thing that happens here, and they're just tapping into it. But in the meantime, 
you also enjoy the benefit of that extra ambient natural light in here. So everything in this RV is doing two things at one time. That's what's so cool about these guys. So again, the big full L-shaped peninsula countertop gives us awesome prep space. Again, things that matter, like big windows, they gave us really the biggest windows they could even here in the kitchen. Now, they don't um, cheat cabinetry to save on weight. If you notice, this is just one smooth uh, board style. This is called a style. All the way across, it doesn't recess back. So they're not stealing from storage space. Um, even right here, right when you walk in the entry door, you've got an awesome, this could be another pantry or coat closet or a little bit of both or whatever you want it to be. And in point of fact, you see, it kind of is set up as a little bit of both. So you can do both things. Um, the uh, control panel, I love that it's up high up here where the kids can't get to it. And I, I can look at this and I can see, oh, uh, the patio awning lighting was on. Well, I can shut that off right here. Isn't that cool? Now, your TV will be included. Um, the check-in team made it to this camper before I could. We have such high volume of campers coming in and out. I was not able to get to this one to do my video work before the check-in team did. I normally am out here right away, but it's just I've been crazy backlog recently. But my point here, TV is included, and you notice it actually does swing out so that you do have easy direct viewing from your slide out or your kitchen here. So as opposed to a, a fixed TV, which is in the center of the camper pointing straight back, this one can kind of point anywhere you want it. And if you notice, you do have nice little outlets and plugs here, uh, USB plugs, so that you can have a nice little like device charging station right by the door for easy access. Now, like I said, we come back to this. This is a full trifold high to bed sleeper sofa. And once again, Passport does everything that matters and they just do it standard. You don't have to upgrade that. Like everything we've looked at basically here, this is just how the Passports are built. They do everything that matters, they do it every time, and they stop so that they're never overbuilt, they're never um, overpriced, they're never overweight. Now up here, again, this is where we get the benefit of that full bathroom. And notice it's a bunkhouse with a full big radius shower instead of a little travel trailer tub. And by putting the toilet on a bit of an angle, you have all the leg room in the world here. So that's never going to be an issue. Um, and again, what's nice about this is being dual entry, mom and dad can access the bathroom without ever opening their bedroom door and uh, losing any privacy. And everyone has access to a toilet at night without disturbing anyone else. And again, we have a shower instead of a tub, which is something I hear calls for all the time. And take a look at this. You, you see how thick this interior wall is? This is like Keystone just at its core. They have like really thick interior walls. And uh, what that allows for is additional structural points. So I think it's like, if you take a shoebox, guys, and you can twist it, you can see how much structural stress that this thing could go through. But by having extra interior wall structure, it's very similar to, I think, what a load-bearing wall would be in a residential construction, um, where it just it helps the whole box stay square. And I think that's, that's a big difference. I like this real door instead of a sliding door. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with sliding doors, but a sliding door at this case, what the cold is making the sticker not want to stick too well, but that's just a TV mounting bracket, no big deal. Um, the, a sliding door right here next to that bedroom sliding door would mean that you would have to lose our bedroom mounting location. So this they maintain a more organic position by having that swinging door. Now, you do maintain full overhead shelves. You do maintain full length wardrobe closets, fully mirrored. You do have power outlets. They're actually down there at the, the base of the bed. So if you do have a CPAP machine or a phone charger or something, you don't have to dangle cords all over the place. And if the cord does dangle, it dangles down near the ground level, not up by you where like you would catch it or, you know, I, I have a bad habit of that. My nightstand by my bed at home, I will, I'll catch my phone charger cord all the time and I'll like rip my phone off the stand and wake up my wife and she gets tired of it. Now, one thing to mention, this is the only member of the Passport Grand Touring Series that has the 74-inch Shorter Camp Queen. They do that because this is a long trailer and they don't want to make it any longer. That being said, if you guys notice, there is all kinds of room down here. Even if you put in a full 80-inch or a full 80-inch residential length queen, you could still walk around the bed. So they want to make sure that you can comfortably get around the bed from the factory. If you are tall like me and you just don't want your feet to hang off the bed, you can still extend this and still be able to walk around it. So I think we've pretty much nailed everything in here on the floor plan. Let's go outside and see how she's put together. So I mentioned inside how passports are the lightest of our lightweights. How are they doing that? It starts with the fact that they have 
uh, and all aluminum, basically, structure. It, I say basically because technically they have galvanized steel, uh, like stamped steel roof trusses, but those are, uh, a lot of people, if you look at all the branding and stuff, a lot of people say, oh yeah, it's all aluminum. Technically different, but functionally the same. Now, a lot of really good features going on here, and I'm gonna have to really kind of buzzsaw through a lot of this. Like, you see all the aluminum framing in here, even under the bed. They don't just aluminum skeleton the exterior. You're gonna find a lot of aluminum skeleton interior, and you'll see that they never cut the corner on their welds. In a non-load-bearing area, they're still doing uh, double vertical welds, which is something a lot of brands miss. You may notice that baggage door keeping out of its way nicely for us. You've got the magnet latches all over here. And just like I said inside, that's because these passports do everything that matters, nothing that doesn't. And I also mentioned their service and reliability records. They are exceptional here at our, our facility. They were one of the very first, like, really standout service products that we had. I, I think we carry a very nice mix of things here at Halet RV. Uh, but his, we've always had above and beyond service records from our, our Passport product, which is one of the areas that doesn't surprise me that it carries Keystone's three-year structural warranty. There's a lot of different warranties out there. There's a lot of different three-year structural warranties out there, but Keystone's is hands down the single most comprehensive. They just cover more things. I think part of that starts from the ground level with their um, Norco chassis. This is a lighter but stronger Z-frame style chassis. It is uh, basically, it's a huck bolted frame. It's very similar in style to aircraft design, but what it allows for is less weight with enhanced strength. It's not the less expensive chassis, but their streamlining allows them to offset the additional cost. Now we do have uh, a fully enclosed heated underbelly down there which is something nice for folks who are um, like right now it is just on the cusp of freezing. Well I wouldn't worry about that in a passport. One I've been in a passport in January with the furnace on and it does not have problems maintaining cabin temperature but if you're going to do true cold camping you have to worry about your your uh, plumbing and whatnot. Well this is not made to be a hard true cold camper. Very few. Uh, I'm really only aware of one ultralight that has actually proven and tested its ability to withstand cold temperatures but the fact is if it's just going to like dip down below freezing overnight real quick you're probably going to be fine here. I, I really wouldn't worry about it like oh it's going to be 26 degrees for six hours you're not going to have a problem here. Now, this is a long floor plan, and uh, that can mean potential towing challenges for shorter wheelbase vehicles. That's another thing a lot of people don't realize. It's not just the weight of the camper you have to consider. You have to consider the length of the camper in relation to the wheelbase of your own vehicle. So uh, that's kind of one of the things that uh, passports have overcome over the years, is that a, a smaller length vehicle like a, a tow package SUV could theoretically pull some of these things. Now this is kind of uh, really pushing that boundary. I don't recommend a whole lot of it, but some of their other models it is possible. That's why they use the wide stance stability axles. The wide stance stability axles by spreading the wheels basically help you cheat the wheelbase. They help avoid the wiggle and they help avoid the bounce from towing. It's not a replacement for a weight distribution and anti-sway. It's a supplement too. You do have a full outside shower on the back here, and I love its location right next to the outside kitchen because it allows for a lot of different um, various sort of cleanup and, and um, utility type arrangements. Now, Passport Outside Kitchen is, is just a master class in how to put a lot in a very little amount of space with these dual wing out countertops right here. Now, a lot of people look at these and say, yeah, but I, I, I feel like I'm gonna, I can't get it open. It's very simple, guys. What you do is you put your hand under here and you push it open that way. That's the trick. You know, for some reason it's out of sight, out of mind, so a lot of folks don't see it. So I thought I'd pass that little tip from your Uncle Josh along there. Bet you didn't think you'd learn about that today. Moving on. So um, this kind of throws a lot of people off. The, the faucet in the outside kitchen has like, it looks like an air hose style quick release on it. That's because you can do different things with it. If what you're looking for is just a normal sink arrangement, you can pop this in. I call it the scorpion tail because you can kind of twist it around and bend it around to whatever shape you want. Or you can put this guy in. And what's cool about this little blue coil hose, I got my gloves on and I'm not left-handed, pardon me, is it has a residential fitting on the end. So what you can do is you can get like a, a garden hose sprayer handle and you can hook that up to here. So you can um, like do a lot of easy, simple campsite cleanup stuff. You know, like if the kids have 
the uh, the Play-Doh out on the uh, picnic table, you can easily blast that all out. Now, you may notice that we've got a little bit of inclement weather going on right now. I don't want to have things uh, exposed any more than I necessarily have to, so I'm going to get that all closed down. Notice, too, that we also had magnet latches back here, but it was actually double latch, so that if the kids slam a door, this big baggage door is not going to like fall on whatever you're cooking and cause like a big hot grease fire mess scenario that's not going to be an issue now passport's an exceptionally price sensitive product like i said this laminated ultralight comes in uh sometimes at less money than some of the uh the more higher end stick built trailers that you'll find out there um there there it's it's really impressive actually how little that their price tags have been affected in the Passport family over the last few years. It seems like every brand every year finds a way to be a little more expensive. Passport has stayed in the pocket every single year and I love that. Um, but again, they don't skimp on the details. Aluminum wheels, standard. By standardizing it, they can offset some of that additional cost. Notice that we have double uh, triple entry steps. So we have triple entry steps on the front and rear and that is that's just something you don't always see done. I do see some brands, even at much higher price points, that on what's considered the off entry door, they'll cut down to two steps. Well, that's stupid. This is probably the, the door that the kids are going to use more often than not, and this is the door to the half bath right here. It makes more sense that this has that third step than just a two step. And I know that going down to two steps would save money, but they're, this is a smart money product, not a cutthroat money product. There is a difference there. Like little preventative maintenance items like the strutted doors so that the kids, if they fling the door open, it's not gonna flip, like smash against the side of the trailer or anything. That's who Passport is and what they do. Now the, the awning on this is big. It is easy tilt. With two fingers, you can crank those awning arms down, and what that can give you there is automatic water runoff, basically, so you can kind of control where the water flows on your campsite a little bit better than, than some or most. Uh, the uh, bigger entry handle on, I guess you'd consider your primary entry door, is something that's nice for folks that maybe have like knee or hip work or something like that. Um, and you actually do have two different black tank flushes on this floor plan, which throws people off but you have two different black tanks because you have two bathrooms that are separated from one another. So once again, the thought processes, the execution is masterclass. You're just looking at a simple streamlined series camper. And I tell you guys, every time I sit there and think, okay, if I was going to get into a new camper today, what floor plans would I look at? And then what brands? And Passport is always in my top three every single time because I'm a function over fashion person. And if I was going to get a big bunkhouse like this for my family, that uh, you know, this would this would be great because I'm not over buying, I'm not over purchasing. It only does what it needs to, and it does it just exceptionally well. And then I'll have something that's still worth really good money when I go to trade and resale it to go get that couple's fifth wheel of my dreams. Basically, that's who these guys are. They take care of your family, and they do it well, and they hold together. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.